All right, hello everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome. So today what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be modeling a book on a pedestal that we're going to be um, automating in the Unreal Engine. There are several steps involving Rhino 3D, Blender, Photoshop, Lightroom, and finally the Unreal Engine. So let's get started. First, we'll start off in a front view by drawing a rectangle. My units are set to inches and I'm going to start off at the zero. So hit zero, enter. Drag out, 24 inches, enter, 36 inches, enter. And then from the midpoint on the top of my rectangle, I'm going to draw another rectangle. This time I'm gonna do one that is um, three eighths by three eighths of an inch. And then I'm gonna do another one up here and I'm gonna make this one three sixteenths by 10.25, enter. So this is the cover, this is the binding, and um, I want to actually rotate this down so we're opening up the book. If we imagine when we put these two together, that I put it right there, and let's mirror it over from the midpoint here to there, you can see it closes very nicely. So let's hinge to open it. So we're going to rotate using the rotate command, enter from this point. So click there and then drag out. And then if you have ortho on, you have to hit shift, but if not, you can just um, rotate it. And I want to kind of eyeball it to try to make it look like it's kind of almost touching the top of this rectangle here. Cool. And I'm going to do the same thing with this one. And you know what? Actually, I'm going to mirror it so it's exact. So let's go mirror. Very cool. So the uh, other thing to keep in mind is the length that I made. I made it 10.25. I'm doing an 8 by 10 book. So um, every page of this is going to be 8 by 10. Therefore, I am did about 10 and a quarter on either side for the length. But you'll make your length based on your book size. Next, let's draw our pages. So. Um, the pages are going to be using a curve here. So if I pop out my curve and I'm going to go to the midpoint here, I'm going to kind of come up and then curve over. So I'm, I've got ortho on. Um, so I went straight up. I clicked for the first point of the curve. Then I'm going to come over a little bit for the second point. And I'm going to hold down shift. So I turn off my ortho and I'm going to kind of just make it feel like the page of a book. Right about to there, click and then enter. Enter again brings up the same command, and now I can pull the pages this way. Click and then enter again. Now we're going to do the interior of the pages. So I'm going to start at the near point here, go straight up, come up a little ways, over, click, click twice, and that'll give me a locked in point so it won't go around this little point here. Then shift, I'm going to come up and kind of make that there be a little bit of negative space and then i'll find my other endpoint here and click enter and if you don't like the way this looks quite yet you can always click on the line and i can pull some of these points around maybe even pull this one down a little bit kind of create like a nice like what you would expect the pages to lay like we just don't want any weird overlapping lines but i think that looks pretty good and I'll maybe move this in a little bit. It's right like that. You know, it's just a bit of artistry. So whatever you think looks good, click on this one and this one, maybe move it around. So I'm just kind of making that line look how I feel like it should. This one will move down a little bit more. But you know, it's control points. It's very similar to like uh, Illustrator. All right, so let's draw a line to close this thing off because we're gonna make it a solid eventually. So now I'm gonna click on this curve here, this curve here, this curve here, and then go over to the other end and this one here and join it. Great. And then um, I'm gonna go ahead and 
uh, start extruding stuff. So let's mirror this to the other side just to make sure that the lines don't like overlap or anything like that. We want it to be a nice V in the middle there. Okay. Very good, very good. You know what, this this might be a little too sharp for the way that it's going to look. It might actually look better if we have it, have it like radius a little bit in the inside there. So I'm going to go ahead and fillet, not fillet edge, just fillet. Enter, and I'm going to do a radius of 1 slash 1 6. Enter, and then click here and here. And that gives me, eh, no, it's not quite the right angle. Let me actually first explode these. Fillet edge, or just fillet, I'm sorry, fillet. And then I'm going to do 1 slash 32 for my radius, which is a 1 16th inch uh, diameter. Okay. So that gives me just like a little arc right there. And one thing you'll notice sometimes is if your tolerances are not perfect, you've got some issues like this. So if I go over to File, uh, Properties, and go to my units and tolerances, I might actually put another zero in there just to make it more accurate. Now, if I fillet, it should be, yeah, nice and clean. All right, so now let's go ahead and join all of this together. As my pages. Cool, so that's pages, and then I've got binder, binder, binder parts. The other thing I might wanna do, um, just so that this little corner isn't like weirdly right on this one, um, I might actually move these down a little bit, just like that. And then I'm going to draw a line just to kind of close this out this to there to there, there to there. Okay. And then trim from these little parts here. Use these. Uh, yeah. Trim this. Hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. All right. So actually, let me draw another. Just redo this rectangle because I'm gonna go over here to here, and then just want it to just kind of be a little bit bigger. Okay. All right. So now we're ready to go to perspective view, and we just wanted that to overlap, which I think. It, overlaps fine. So now I'm going to extrude this, um, these three all at the same time. So I'm going to do this one, this one, and this one, extrude curve, and I'm going to go 10, uh, no, 8.25, 8.25, because 8 by 10 is what we're looking for. And then you can see, this is why I did that. So I have this overlapping now, which looks a little bit more natural. And also when I Boolean union it, it gets rid of any of the weird overlapping. So I can get rid of these curves now, and you can see. Um, and then just to finish cleaning that up, I can merge all coplanar faces and delete any curves. And you can see that that extrusion now is all one nice piece. Okay. And then this is our pages, and we're going to extrude this eight inches. And if it's not closing, it's because I didn't join those together. So I got to come back around here and join the filleted edge there, or the fillet, not filleted edge, just fillet. Okay. And then extrude eight inches there. Now it's solid. And if yours still isn't solid, then you probably, when you have it extruding, you don't have solid selected. So you make sure you have solid selected on your on your controls. 8.25. Or I'm sorry, just eight. Okay. And I'm looking at this and I'm like, you know what? I do not like that negative space underneath. It feels a little bit too 
extreme. So let me go back to my curves here. Uh, I'll go to back to my front view just so I can kind of um, play with these. So I'm going to click on these uh, curves here. And you see I've got them both selected on both sides here. And then I'm going to kind of push them down to where they're closer to flush. Still not overlapping there. And then these areas right here, I'm going to grab the other side over here. And I'm going to push those down a little bit too. Okay. Back into perspective. And I'll go eight again. Yeah, that looks a little better. Okay. And it's, you know, we're just trying to kind of be a little artistic about it. Want it to look real, but not real weird. And then I'm going to move this um, negative one slash eighth of an inch just to have it centered on my binding because I made the binding eight and a half, which is a little bit longer. All right. So let's go back to our front view. And let's then go back to a top view here. Okay. You can see we want to actually select this whole thing and move it this way. And then we actually want to extrude this curve. Perpendicular, 24 inches. So this is going to be our book stand. And if you feel like it's too big, I mean, I don't care what size your pedestal is, make it what you want. Um, all right, cool. So we got the book all basically modeled. And it is sinking down into our object here. So I'm going to move this up, uh, maybe 0.25. And you know, you can also have this book be basically any angle you want. I mean, I might keep one version of it flat, so it's a little easier if you need to mess with it later on. Um, but for the most part, I like to have this book up. Uh, maybe let's raise it up by 8 and then rotate it at a 60 degree angle. So it's kind of floating magically in space, which we can have happen because, you know, it's, uh, there's no physics in, in virtual spaces. <laughs> so, all right. And then I'm going to left to right select and delete the curves. Um, let's look at it and render it here. And I feel like it's looking very book-like, which is exactly what we're looking for. See that curve there, though. Let's delete that. All right. Um, next up, and, and the reason why I rotated it by 60 degrees is if I ever wanted to put it back flat, I can just go rotate negative 60, and that's flat now, right? So always using real numbers helps in mathematics. All right. So um, the next thing I want to do is make sure that my page sizes are about accurate. Now, yeah, they don't have to be 100% perfect, but you do want the page sizes to be uh, relatively in sync with the size and format of your book that you're modeling. So how do I tell the length of this curved line? Uh, first, I'm going to duplicate the edges. So duplicate edge, dupe edge is the command. And I'm going to duplicate this edge, this edge, this edge, enter and then type join. And so that breaks that out into a curve. And then all I got to do is type length. And yeah, so it's 19.83, which is not 20, which 20 would be perfect. So I mean, I can stretch it, I can change it if I want to. But I mean, really, it's such a small amount, I don't think it's going to be much warp. And then I know that this, um, if I duplicate the edge here, because I extruded this eight inches, uh, it should be exactly eight inches. Okay, so now I've got this edge. I can go length, and it's eight inches. So yeah, that's basically just making sure that I've got eight by ten um, on my uh, my pages here for for my for my book as it, the pages are turning, so it doesn't look warped. All right. So in the next step, um, like we like to do, is, is to create some layers and have those layers indicate um, the different parts of our objects. So let's switch over to the layers view here. And I'm going to switch layer one. I'm going to call this pedestal. And select this object, right click, J 
change object layer. Then I'm going to extract the surfaces on the face of this book. Extract surface, this one, this one, and then our little rounded out section there. Enter. Join them together. And then I'm going to call that um, pages or open pages. Open underscore pages. Okay, change object layer, because that's where we're going to actually apply our animation. This piece here, since we extracted, it's still on one piece, and I'm going to title this one pages. And change object layer. Okay, and then this I'm going to title uh, binding. Change object layer. And then I'm going to extract the surfaces. If you've got a different thing on this one than on this one, um, then you need to extract the surfaces. If you've got like the, the book goes all the way across, um, then you can have it all be one piece. Uh, but mine, I've got two different images on the front and the back. So I'm going to extract surface this, this, here. So now I've got this one, which will be my book cover. So I'm going to call this uh, front cover or cover front. Let's do cover front just so they'll stay in alphabetical order. Uh, change object layer and I'll change it to brown. Why not? Okay. And then this one cover back. And change the color. We'll do sea green. Not that it really matters, but whatever. Okay, so that I think is the parts. Um, so I've got one image that's gonna be on the front cover, one inch is that uh, one image that will be on the back cover. If you wanted to put wording on your binding, you can make that a different layer. I'm not gonna do that. And then I got one for my pedestal. And we are ready now to export and bring it into Blender, but I'm gonna look at it in the front real quick. I might want to actually lower this down a little bit. It seems a little high. Okay. And maybe I'll pull it forward a little bit too. Yeah, you can arrange it later. But anyway, so that's um, basically that. And I'm going to use my macro, uh, my rename macro which I have set up and um, I've talked about in previous uh, videos. Um, so now all of these objects are named properly. So if I click on it, it's titled open pages, the actual object, as well as the layer. And then um, I'm going to actually save this as and put it in a proper place. Um, I'm going to create a new folder and call it book demo. Okay, open it up and I'm going to call this book, book demo. And then I'm going to use my batch export. If you don't have batch export because you're using a Mac or whatever, go ahead and just export each individual object. There's only like five of them here. File export selected and do FBX. Um, oh, first though, wait, we got to change our units, properties. We're going to be using feet in um, Rhino so, or in uh, Blender. So I'm going to change this to feet here. Okay. Scale it. It's fine. Don't want to skip that step. So yeah, select each thing, go export selected and export them as individual FBXs. I've got my batch export here, so I can use that macro that works on my PC. And now we are ready under my book demo here. I see I've got all of my FBXs, and I can open up Blender in the next part.